There is no guarantee for success, but there are ways to get closer to it when you do the right things. Who you surround yourself with is just as important as what you do. Finding the right people, the right classes, the right activities, and taking the right tests are all decisions that shape your future. Find out more today on Destination University with Dr. Cynthia Cologne. Dr. Cologne and her guests will give you the tips you need, whether you're a student, parent, or educator. Now, here is your host, Dr. Cynthia Cologne. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Destination University. We're running a special series right now called 30 Teens and 30 Dreams, following teenagers, high school seniors who have been admitted to college and are dishing out all the scoop on what went right, what they would do differently, and giving you the behind the scenes truth. If you are a college bound teen or a champion of one, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Today, you're going to meet Hannah. Hannah, she does club soccer. She's the managing editor of a yearbook. I'll let her tell you all about a little about herself, but she sticks in our minds. The essay coaches from essay camp remember her without a doubt from her essay. It's all about her being a superhero. I know, weird, right? Trust me, you'll find out. Okay, before we jump into Hannah, we'll give you a hot tip of the day from our friends over at bigfuture.org. Bigfuture.org is free, it's mobile friendly, and it's a personal guide to college admissions. You can explore your careers, plan for college, and learn how to pay for college. And who doesn't need to know how to pay for college? You can head on over there now, and you can set up an account, which is completely free, and you can um, explore different majors and careers. For those of you who are not sure, and so many freshmen, sophomores, you don't know necessarily what you wanna major in, or what that, how that's going to lead to a career. So I use this with my private clients all the time. I use this function, looking up careers and then backwards mapping to what major will go with that. So Hannah's gonna share with you a little bit about her own major that she's doing and what kind of uh, researcher she wants to be. So head on over to bigfuture.org, open up your account and learn more about your majors and careers. Okay, this is a test, a uh, sound check. Hannah, can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yep, perfect. All right, well, let's get on with the star of the show, which is Hannah, of course, is our star. And I'm gonna just jump right in because we're, we're live, we're, 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 we're in it. And what I wanna ask is, would you mind sharing just a little bit about, you know, yourself and the type of high school you go to, you know, how we got connected, and uh, just so so people know, because a lot of our partner schools are, are Catholic schools, but you are not from one of those Catholic schools. So share a bit about you. Um, yes. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Cordham. Um, I'm currently a senior at um, Ruben S. Iowa High School. It's in Chino Hills, um, for those of you who know where that is. Um, and it is a public high school. There are about 2,200 students, so um, kind of medium sized. And um, the reason I found out about Dr. C um, is through soccer, which I'll talk about more in a bit, but um, one of my old teammates, um, we're still friends, uh, reached out uh, to me and my mom was just, uh, she's a year older for context and said, this is a great opportunity, um, check this out. And we did, and we called Dr. C and it just, from the start, I kind of knew that this was something I was interested in, especially as someone who's, um, older sibling uh, parents really didn't know a lot about the college process and how it's changed since they went. And so just a great opportunity to um, kind of get any concerns I had um, resolved before I had to submit my application. Well, if your parents are anything like about my, I'm sure they're about my age and so many of my friends, um, you know, same thing. Like we just, you know, we don't know, you don't know what you don't know and you don't know, like, just how much the, the process has changed. And so I think there are a lot of parents now looking to get a little bit extra help. Not that you didn't have help at your own high school, but getting some extra help along the way, it was probably more helpful, even more helpful to them than it was for you because you know they would just want the best for you. So, okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. So take us to, through how you came up with your list um, of colleges of where you wanted to apply. Did you have a specific major or a geographic location? What were you looking for in a college? Um, and when, how early in your process did you start um, looking for colleges? 
Um, okay, so I'm a little embarrassed to say this. My college list changed a lot from what I thought it would be until what it turned into um, now. And I think a lot of that just had to do um, with what I wanted to do changing. Uh, originally, I was interested in history. Um, and then as I learned more about uh, cognitive science or psychology um, and started figuring out what I wanted to do, um, I started researching um, more to that. And Definitely, I wanted to stay in California as my top choice. Uh, I mean, the UCs and Cal State school systems, some of the best around. Um, and so just being surrounded by them. I mean, I live 20 minutes away from Cal Poly Pomona. So like I kind of was already seeing the campus and things like that. So I kind of knew I wanted to stay in the Southern California environment. Um, but I wasn't, I was open to traveling. So I did apply to some out-of-state schools. Um, but mainly all with the goal of like being a research-based institution um, as I got further along. That's interesting. So, um, you know, so many, I used to work at a, at a private high school for girls and uh, everybody would say, oh, I want to stay in California because, you know, we love the, the weather. We love that it's near an ocean, you know, all, so many things to love about California. But so many of the schools have become so competitive. So it's almost it's difficult to know for sure if you're going to be able to have that choice of opportunity. Um, so good for you for, for knowing what you want. And also good for you for knowing that you wanted a research-based institution. So, and we can talk a little bit more about like that one to share with us where you, you're headed and how you came to that decision. But yeah, good for you for knowing that. Um, so here's the thing. Um, tell us about, you know, your, a little bit about your, we're going to talk about what you did right and what you would change different, you know, do differently if you had to do this all over again. But before we get to that, I want you to share with everyone, you know, your soccer and uh, being uh, the managing editor for, for the yearbook and also how you put all those things together in your, in some of your essays. I mean, how did you tell your story and what, what do you think is your coolness factor? What helped what do you think helped you stand out? Because you have some great choices here that people would give their right arm for. <laughs> yeah, I'm very fortunate to have the choices that I do. Um, I think I put soccer in your book as my coolness factor because it has segued into so many other things, um, aspects of my life. Um, I've done club soccer for 10 years since I was eight. Um, and for a while, that was my entire life. That was all I did, you know, at the field, hours upon hours a week, games every weekend. And um, high school, I really started to branch out of that. Um, and I always thought I wanted to play something in college, um, but with COVID and everything, um, that kind of derailed my plans and I kind of focused, I was always more focused on my academics over playing, um, but I did um, start to shift more academic focus during that time, just not wanting to take any chances on that. Um, and then for yearbook, um, I did yearbook for three years. This is my first year as the managing editor. And basically my job is to make sure a 380 page book gets turned in by April so that our seniors can have it before they go on their senior break. Um, and do all did, their you senior make, did you make the deadline? I have to we ask. We did make the deadline. deadline, we did. It was very, very stressful. We didn't turn in our last page till 8 p.m. on the deadline day, but um, it was, it just, that was one of my favorite things about high school was it forced me to interact with people in baby, basically a different environment. Like I had classes with these people, but then I was going out and watching them play or I was going and seeing them perform in a concert. And it just um, really exposed me to all the different types of things that go on in my school. Cause I'm very lucky to have a school that does a lot of different things. Like their art band program is very strong and just we do all the sports. So just having that opportunity really pushed me into getting getting involved in school life, if that makes sense, in a way I wouldn't have without it. It completely makes sense. And I want to just say, and I don't know if you've ever heard me say this, but um, there is this, when I was working for Vassar College in the admission office, I call it the line for five, that at the very top of our, when we, where we take notes on, on, on each applicant, there was a blank space. And, only if the student was the student body president, um, uh, team captain of a major sport at their school, um, the editor of their yearbook or newspaper, a Girl Scout Gold Award or Eagle Scout, uh, or like, you know, saving the planet, curing cancer, you know, something 
some research or something. That went at the very top. So for you, your application would have gotten sort of that notation. And, and I think it's because you do have to, I mean, you're in charge of a team. You are in charge, you have this responsibility. You just said 380 page your book that has to be turned in on time. And you have to endear yourself to so many people and get to really know the school. I mean, you're, you know, so sort of an ambassador of the school. So it's a big, big job for sure. Right. Yes, for sure. Um, <laughs> and this year we had a lot of new freshmen or new staff who like didn't know how to use a camera. So I was just like that added level of like teaching them and uh, just kind of mentoring them kind of gave me a new perspective, uh, especially with having to meet deadlines and stuff and having to balance that. Uh, really learned a lot this year. Yeah, I mean, it really is like a, you know, a, it's, a, it's a mini full-time job, really, I think, I think of it that way. So, okay, good, fair enough. Um, let's talk about the two sides of the coin. When the admissions process, actually many people don't realize this, but it begins in freshman year. And it is a culmination, once you apply, it's a culmination of everything that you've done um, uh, academically and, and co-curricularly. So what did you do right, looking back on your whole four year journey, um, three and a half year journey? And what would you do different? Like what advice would you give yourself if you were to go through it again? So go ahead, you can start either. Yeah, I'm going to start with what I did right because I think it's just uh, the easiest way um, to start. Um, I have always loved learning and prided myself in my academics. Um, so I took an AP class my freshman year. Um, and so I've just continued to take that. I, that's not offered to a lot of freshmen, but I had that opportunity and I took advantage of it. And I'm very glad I did because it helped me balance my schedule as I went into arguably harder years, you know, junior year especially. Um, and taking those AP classes, um, we offer, they have a lot at my school. Um, and I took a lot, not uh, just specified, like I guess, um, like I didn't take all math APs or all science. I took a little bit of everything to kind of figure out what I liked and what I didn't. Um, and taking that really, I think, helped me figure out the path I want to do now and what I want to do. Um, because I think without those, I would always be um, wondering. So I think having that really helped me give a direction to my application, if that makes sense. Um, and I think the best place to try it is high school, <laughs> um, especially because then you can talk about um, being a well-rounded person in general. Um, something I also think I did right was um, taking on those leadership roles. Um, obviously with soccer, it was really hard being a full-time student and an athlete, but um, in your book, you know, I stayed after school. I went to the games. I put myself in a position where I was, you know, staying late after school to get that last picture or do that last interview. And um, I think my advisor or teacher, whatever you want to call them, kind of um, recognized that. And that's why um, he put me on the team. I knew that I was going to be the managing editor last year. Um, normally, he doesn't pick it until the year of. And um, I got the opportunity to go to um, some summer camps um, and just work on like theme design, things like that, um, which is, you know, something you really need when you're trying to put together a book. Um, I would also recommend uh, taking the SAT. I took it and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but just give yourself the most opportunities you can because sometimes you might not think you need it, but then in the end, it comes back for like a scholarship opportunity or a fee waiver. And um, it's really helpful in the long run, even if you don't recognize it now. Yeah, so to that point, you you opted right now, obviously, so many schools have test optional and you were set on going or staying in California, which uh, for those of you who are watching and, and listening, um, just to be clear, the California public schools Cal State system and the University of California system do not require, in fact, you cannot submit test scores for admission. So in many ways, Anna, you could have opted out and not taken it at all. But um, do, uh, can you share with, with, with everyone, was there a reason, like, was there a reason that you took it or did you know that you could um, use that for scholarship or how did you decide to take it? Um, well, it started with my mother coming into my room and handing me a 12,000, uh, a 1200 page SAT prep book back when, before everything went test optional and saying, 
put in some time. It's your summer. You got to like prep for it. And, you know, of course, this is before everything was test, test optional. So I did it. Um, that was, I want to say my sophomore year. So I wouldn't have taken it till my junior year. And I didn't actually end up taking it till my senior year. But I figured I put in all this time before, did a little bit of a refresher. And I just figured like, if I put in this time, might as well say I made an effort and did it, even if it doesn't end up being helpful. I can say that I went out there and I tried it. And if it ends up helping me, it does. And if it doesn't, then at least I can say I studied and I tried to do well. And then people, so, um, you know, college board, when you take the exam, um, you know, colleges can purchase names um, based on your PSAT scores or colleges can so somehow i think you said one of the schools got a hold of you and offered you a fee waiver based on your test score is that how it happened yeah it was actually um multiple schools um that i got um wow. there were a couple i had like five and i heard that not doing it now but one of them was from rice university um and fordham uh i think it was san diego christian college a couple of schools um, offered me fee waivers, so I don't didn't have an application fee if I submitted my test scores along with a normal application. Wow. And um, I originally thought fee waivers were just for people who couldn't pay the application fee, so this was a complete shock. Like I came um, asking a couple people, like, you know what this is? This is a scam. This is real. <laughs> like, no, take advantage of this. Take advantage of this. And I was like, okay, I I will. So I narrowed it down based on what I wanted first, and then submitted it just to one school for them but um just wow. having that opportunity made me feel good like less of an application cost um was nice awesome oh my gosh okay is there any advice that you would give yourself what is there anything that you would do differently that you you know wish you had done um along the way yes um so much i definitely um wish i had gotten involved in a few more service clubs um i did do volunteering through national honor society and um Leo Club, I don't know if you have that. Um, and at my mom's school, um, she's a teacher, so helping her like paint her wall or put, put posters up was just the way I helped like the teachers in her building. Um, but I definitely think that with COVID, I kind of used that as my excuse to say, oh, I don't need to, like, I can't volunteer. There's no volunteering, which is such a lie. There were so many opportunities and I just didn't take advantage of them. So going back, I would definitely have done that. Um, and then also just, starting my application process earlier. And that's so weird to say because I had my essays done um, before like before my senior year even started. But um, I didn't submit my UC application until the day they were due, like people who pro procrastinate. But honestly, I think I was just worried about, like I think I should have asked people earlier because I was so concerned that I was missing something or that I was gonna click the submit button and then just like, realize I left out a huge chunk of something and so I think um I would have just asked for my teacher support earlier than I did not to say I didn't but I would have taken advantage of that way earlier than I did um because it did feel like stressful hitting that submit button on the day of um like so many people uh, so to, to be clear <laughs> Hannah is maybe one that you waited to the end, not because you didn't have your application ready, right? I want to be clear because she took SA camp and had those essays I done. Did. My essays were ready. I was just so worried that I was missing something or that there was an activity I forgot or an award I hadn't won or something. I think um, that's called analysis paralysis or I think there's a saying for that. It was something. It was like, yeah. it was not to say I didn't have, like, I didn't end up making any changes. I just, I physically, like, I don't know. There was something there. I just, well, I needed to tell, I needed that reassurance. And I think I should have got it a lot earlier, which, you know. Um, and then I would have also, um, this is going to sound weird, but I would have gone to a lot more of my teachers, like office hours or connected with them more, even though I didn't end up applying to a lot of private schools. Um, what I was interested in, there were a couple of private schools that I was thinking of that required letters of recommendation. And um, I just feel, especially with COVID, um, I didn't really get to meet my teachers personally my junior year. Um, so I definitely should have gone to a lot of their online Zooms or just in-person office hours, which I do a lot this year. Um, 
just so I can have that connection with them. And I think if you want to go to a private school, that that is one of the most important things you cover it in essay camp letter of rec. Well, I, this is such a good point, such a golden nugget. Like this is probably going to be my favorite nugget here uh, because no one has, has brought this up. But um, earlier you were talking about your book and having connected with the, your yearbook advisor. And then um, I think you said it's he, it's he, right? Um, yeah. Because of that, he saw you put in the commitment and all that, and then selected you early on. Also, then uh, ushered you off to um, your your camps, the leadership camps, and the and the and the yearbook camps. And so, I cannot drive this point home enough that most and and I know we've been in this you know COVID and it was hard, but I love what you're saying that you wish you would have sort of what I hear you saying is not just going to these office hours, but building some relationships because you just don't know where those are going to lead. And I used to say when I was a school administrator that the students who came by my office, I was the dean of students, I was a college counselor, I was a principal. The students who came back to my office, you better believe the next time I got something in the mail that said, oh, nominate a kid for, I don't know, this camp or this scholarship or that scholarship, guess who? Guess what? We're human. We think of the, the kids who, the students who come, who come in and that's who comes to mind. So that's a great thing to say to, to um, forge relationships with adults in your life because you just never know. So that's yeah. great. I'm glad. I'm glad that's a good, good piece of advice. Okay, so um, uh, we're now down to the to the drum roll, please. <laughs> the drum roll, please. Okay, you have lots of good options, and so go ahead and uh, go ahead and reveal where you're going, and then we can um, you can tell us how you came to that decision. So go ahead, drum roll. Yes, I am going. You can see my switch right now. Um, the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. Um, probably coast for some of you guys listening. Um, I know when I was tutoring for during College Academy, they said it being right in their backyard. So um, I'm really excited to go. I had um, a lot of good choices. Um, I was accepted into seven schools, um, Cal Poly Pomona, San Diego State University, UC Riverside, UC Davis, Fordham University, UC Santa Barbara, and UCLA. Oh my goodness. Ah, okay, everybody knows you, uh, that I'm a, I'm a Trojan, uh, but I also did my doctorate at UCLA and, it just, and my sister went there. I just love it. I'm so proud of you and I'm so excited for you. And um, you should tell my, my favorite gift to my sister when she went to UCLA is someone got her a pair of uh, walk, running and walking shoes because it's so hilly and like you, you walk everywhere there and you need those good pair of shoes. So that's what you should get. Now, how did you, how did you come to this decision? Uh, I think you went for a little bit of a tour. Where did you go tour and, and how did you come to this choice? Um, yeah, so I went twice. Um, once I just went, um, actually the person who introduced me to the program, Ashley, um, I reached out to her. I was just like, oh my God, you feel it? Which is so funny because that's where she's going right now. And she was like, oh my God, come over. I'll give you the tour. I'll show you like the dorms and stuff. And unfortunately, something came up and she couldn't go, but we just decided as a family, um, my parents and I were going to come and we we're going to check out just the campus, um, see what LA traffic was like, because that's not scary at all, <laughs> um, and just see what the environment was like. Um, and so we went on the tour and I absolutely loved the campus. Um, I loved Westwood. Um, and as we walked by, um, I started doing more research. Um, which is ironic because one of the reasons I'm going is because it's a research-based institution um, that's very research-oriented. If you haven't uh, figured that out, right? No, share with everyone um, what your what your major is and why you want this sort of niche of like the research. Um, uh, so my major is precognitive science or cognitive science, and it's a branch of psychology. And um, what I hope to do in the future is possibly get a double major with that in neuroscience so I can do a neuropsychological route doing research um, basically in um, certain types of neurotransmitters like Alzheimer's uh, that are caused by, oh my God, Alzheimer's research that's coming out is dealing with neurotransmitter issues, um, things like that. And basically, just how is psychology and how do you apply the science of that into helping people on a day-to-day -day basis. It's um, applied research rather than um, experimental research in the sense that it's not just to prove something or to prove a theory, it's to help people. So 
that's really interesting for me. Okay, you, for those of you who are watching or listening, I, I don't. If you're like me, that just went right over my head. I, I know kind of what you're talking about, and uh, the point is, uh, Hannah knows what she what she's really looking for in not just the major, but the classes that are offered and how she's going to be taught and, and the sort of what the future is for her. So that is perfect. Okay, so if you don't mind sharing, if walk us through the day, you know, one of the days that you remember like opening up these letters and like what happened? Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk about, um, it was March 18th, the Friday, um, and that day UC Irvine, UC San Diego, and UCLA all came out on the same day. Um, and the first thing I opened was my rejection letter from UC Irvine. And that was not a great start to the day. Um, so then after that, um, I moved on to UC San Diego because that one was posted. Um, and I saw that I'd been waitlisted and um, that had been my dream school <laughs> for years. Um, I had played at the campus, seen it, and I was really crushed, um, so crushed that when I saw UCLA came out, I just kind of sat for an hour, not wanting to open it, not wanting to like move. And then finally my parents were just like, just open it, get your answer because the not knowing is gonna be worse. Um, and so I opened it and then I saw that of all schools that had been accepted into UCLA, um, which was just a surreal experience. I remember opening the letter and just, thinking that I read it wrong, like reading it over and over again, after especially the stress that had come like an hour before um, and just being in shock. Um, so don't count yourself out. If, like, if you think you're not going to get into school, just try, give it up so you can walk away saying you've tried. And yeah. This is unbelievable. Okay, I had, you, I had not heard, I didn't know this part of the story. So you were had already been admitted to Riverside and UC Santa Barbara before the March 18th. Is that what you're saying? No, I had been accepted to UC Riverside and UC Davis. Um, Davis, Santa okay. Barbara, I learned about the following week. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you'd been admitted to two UCs, and then on March 18th, these other three came out, and you started with Irvine rejection, then waitlist at your dream school, San Diego, UC San Diego. So. A I'm gonna guess, as it, most teenagers would say, oh, but Dr. C, there's no way, if I didn't get in, like, there's no way I'm gonna get to UCLA. So is that why you were waiting for like an hour before you opened it? Yes, for sure. I just like, I didn't wanna see like another rejection or something. I just told myself like, I, I was done for the day. Like I couldn't handle any more decisions. Like three in one day is a lot. Like mostly you're like waiting for like one at a time, three in one day, like I'm, I'm sure for everyone who went through what I did, like it was, it was a long day, yeah. no matter what happens. That would be brutal. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. Okay. So this is a testament to, like you said, just don't count yourself out. And, you know, for students of mine, you know, whether private students or, or essay campers, I'm like, you don't know, you know, the, all of the UCs, they're very different. I know it's one system, but each one is slightly different. Each one has different readers and different things they're looking for. And, whatever and same thing with the, you know ivy leagues like sometimes I, oh you know oh if i got into this ivy league then certainly you know and you just you just don't know how it's all going to work out so oh my goodness so something obviously spoke to that to to that group that committee more than the others <gasps> hannah that's amazing that's a good story and you know what is brave of you to share and be so candid so i thank you for sharing because students will learn, other students that are watching or listening will learn from that. So don't count yourself out. I cannot um, let you go, uh, we're, I'm gonna do the wrap up here in a second, but I cannot let you go without um, just sharing that again, I, I mentioned early on uh, uh, about the essay. So I was not your your essay coach for that week, I, 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 we were together that week, but uh, you, were, you had coach Dina and um, you talked about your backpack and you wrote it about sort of being a superhero with your backpack. So do you want to just share share a little bit about what you what this essay was all about? Yes, I'm so excited to talk about this because I still love it so much. Um, basically, part of my intro is why I talked about your book and soccer is because um, I, like I said, I was involved with everything on the school campus. I was just kind of the person in the background, um, if you understand that. Um, 
but I kind of made a name for myself. I can't explain it by being a person you come to for help in the sense that because I was always going from place to place to place, I carried everything with me in one backpack, like school to soccer to yearbook, um, like my giant camera and then my backpack full of stuff that's basically exploding. Um, and as such, I developed a reputation as the person who, you know, always has that thing you're missing or like the girl with the 20 colored gel pens that are not necessary, but helpful. Um, so like, I would always have that extra hair tie if you forgot one when you're running the mile or I was just always that person who's like, hey, you need something, ask, ask Hannah for this. And so that's what my essay turned into. Um, I opened it by saying my friends always joke about the ridiculously heavy weight of my backpack. And it is, it still weighs like 15 pounds or something ridiculous. Um, and just <laughs> spiraling downward from there and talking about how um, as a forgetful person, I always pack, you know, extra so I don't have to stress about forgetting something or missing out on that one thing because I always think it's better to be overprepared than to be underprepared. And in that process of kind of helping myself, I've learned to use it to help others, which is... Um, this essay is definitely going to be in the sample packet for class this summer. Um, but I think you like talk about how you, you, the gel pens or the extra scrunchy, um, like a sewing kit and like... Um, uh, I don't know, a ruler, a tape, like all the like the things, like just like the things. And so it, it was just when I read it, um, it was just great. And Hannah was one of our students who um, you can you can sort of do the different packages of the essay camp. And so we also had a couple of hours together to go over some things throughout the year. So uh, I had reason to to read your essays later and they're fantastic. So go Coach Dina and go Hannah. Love it. Love it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Any last, last words? I'm going to do the wrap up and then we're going to wave goodbye, but anything else you want to say? I think just if you're here and you're watching this, you're in the right place. Like trust the process and trust Dr. C, especially if you're going and doing essay boot camp. I wish I had done Dream College Academy um, sooner because I think it would have helped with a lot of the regrets that I talked about having. Um, but I also think rely on the people around you and trust in your friends too um they're going through the same things you're going through so um put that trust in them and it's it's a less stressful process if you oh. have people to work through with it oh my god hannah she is a superhero oh so sweet okay this might be one of my favorite episodes okay well you heard it straight from hannah trust the process trust the people around you connect with adults and trust your friends. They're all going through the same thing too. All right, let me do a closing and then we'll come back and say wave goodbye to everybody. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, right? Each interview gets better and better. Okay, everyone, if this, if this episode has in any way fueled your confidence or helped to build your dreams, please share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. And how could it? Not? Oh, there's Elvis. Uh, and those of you who are, are parents, please join us in our Facebook group, uh, Destination University, Y-O-U, because the destination is not university, the destination is you. And you heard Hannah talk about Essay Camp and also Dream College Academy, which she was a peer mentor for. But those of you who are interested, SA Camp is now officially open for summer of 2022. You can go to my website, drcynthiacolon.com forward slash SA Camp and get all the details there, register or book a call with me. That is all I have for you to continue to follow us through this series. It really, Hannah is kicking off sort of the last week of this series. All right, wave goodbye. Bye everyone, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening this week to Destination University. Be sure to join Dr. Cynthia Colon again and get one step closer to your success. 